Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Phil Rosenberg Show. I am, of course, Phil Rosenberg, and I'm here today with Evan Rabin, who is going to discuss with me the state of the chess teaching business in New York City, and perhaps it'll refer to the same business around the country. So, of course, we're in the middle of the pandemic, and budget cuts are nigh. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Phil. Uh, it's great to be here. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. I look forward to asking any questions you might have. Okay, so the first obvious thing, how is the chess teaching business looking moving forward? Because uh, so in the in interest of full disclosure, I should say that I have taught for Premier Chess. So Evan and I know one another fairly well. Um, nice guy good business person as well. So I can say that. And uh, you're really hooked into the business of chess in New York City. And even you have a lot of information around, about stuff around the country and even around the world tournaments and what's happening. So uh, what what is happening for crying out loud? I mean, so first, let's talk about right now, how is chess occurring for those people that are still involved? Sure. So um, yeah, I mean, look, our business is definitely not quite as active as before. Um, that said, um, you know, we're definitely constantly, uh, you know, actually developing our business and we really are, um, you know, staying afloat. Uh, we are at the moment um, really just uh, spending a lot of time uh, developing uh, our corporate classes. Uh, right now we converted about uh, four or five or about probably almost 10, 15 of our school programs virtually. And we are so you're doing so right now, most of the kids are being taught through all and is it most or all kids are being taught through zoom. Uh, well, uh, all, all the school programs I have converted are actually doing it through Well, some schools are doing it through zoom. Uh, until recently, the DOE actually banned zoom. Um, and even now they have a special zoom but only if you're a doe employee could you really use that so let me let me re-ask the question uh are there any classes taking place in person or are they all via some sort of teleconferencing they're all they're all via teleconferencing okay so there's nothing happening what is the prediction do you know for schools opening back up we're in the we're right sort of in the middle of may uh june is historically the the last month assuming there's no makeup time June is typically the last month in New York City for schools and then summer break and then we would all come back in September. So does that cycle, does it, does it seem like it's gonna normalize, it's gonna stay the same or should we expect something different? What do you think? Honestly, I'm a big fan of just controlling the controllables. Um, so right now, I don't even think it quite frankly makes sense to try uh, to figure that out, um, you know, I was just on two district meetings uh, this week, uh, last night with the CEC one uh, for district one and the previous night I was with uh, district 30, uh, where by the way, we actually have four school programs in district 30 at PS 150, 166, 78 and 85. Um, so truly like, I mean, look, I've, I've heard a million different, you know, directions. Yeah, but I'm wondering, what do you think is going to, I know you're saying it's difficult to anticipate. I get it. No one knows what the future holds. And right now it's even more difficult to anticipate than in ordinary times, which is never quite possible. But you do have your finger on the pulse of the chess business, of the Department of Education. You know where they stand. So what, just take a guess for me. What do you think we're looking at come September and even more immediately when are we going to be seeing any sort of programming happening over the summer and then for the regular school year? What do you think? I know you can't know for sure, but what do you think is going to happen or could happen? I mean, I, I, again, I, I look, I, my guess is just as random as anyone else's. I think, again, you need to control what's controllable now. Uh, you need to focus on setting up private virtual lessons now and group virtual lessons so, now. We're doing we'll get to that. series every week. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna get to we're gonna get to ways for people to expand their business at home and stuff. But uh, I'm gonna press you on this question. I know you don't want to give an answer, but it's my job as an interviewer to get an answer out of you. 
what do you think the future of chess in New York City is going to look like, could look like? What's a reasonable, rational possibility? Are things going to remain roughly the same? Or are they going to change? If so, how do you think they might change? We know well, budget I mean, cuts are coming. Eventually, they'll definitely be the same. That's for sure. I think, you know, things will, you know, eventually normalize. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely don't think they're going to be, you know. Like how long do so. you think it'll be till things normalize? I mean, I literally have no idea, but I'll, you know, say maybe in the, the fall. But again, I, I, I literally have no idea. You know, I, I didn't think this would be, you know, nearly as this long already. So, um, but yes, I mean, if, if I had to guess, yes, uh, you know, in, in the fall, I think it would be, you know, relatively normal. Okay. So it's a, it is a bit of a scary moment. So now let's get to the question that you were answering before I asked it, which is, one of the more important questions that we can ask, which is, what do you say to those teachers, chess teachers right now, who their programs have shut down, their income has been cut in some cases, more than half, in some cases, 100% of their income is gone. Uh, outside of, of course, taking advantage of unemployment insurance and receiving the stimulus check, of course, right? So do the, do those things. But in terms of chess, so you were talking about expanding your own universe of chess teaching. I guess is that on a business? Is that a business to business or business to school or just individual to to parent? Or what do you, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I would say the biggest thing is just being able to adapt. Um, and this is not just with chess. This is with any business. Um, you know, I know a lot of uh, great companies and professionals that have been actually changing. Um, you know, we started YESC doing most of our school programs virtually. Um, we've also, you know, are starting to do probably classes at the law firm, Kramer 11, virtually. Um, so, yeah, we're actually staying, uh, you know, very productive. You can't use this as a problem. It needs to be an opportunity. Um, and yeah, I know a lot of other companies that are definitely doing the same. Uh, you know, one company that comes to mind is hands on and is hands on hoop skills uh, and guitar guy guru, right? Both of our education partners that are doing a lot of uh, virtual classes uh, online. Um, you know, you also have something like Atomic Total Fitness, which um, normally is a exclusively, you know, one on one training. So hold on though, but those are existing businesses that you're saying need to, uh, so that's business to business. You're saying they need to go digital and here are some great examples of companies that have done that pretty successfully. But what do you say to individual teachers uh, who, you know, their career has been teaching chefs? And well, I'm saying this because it's the exact same thing. Yes, they, those are businesses. Um, but, you know, look, I, I know a lot of, I mean, for instance, I have one person on my team. He's sort of doing it right. You know, I, I see him every few days posting, you know, hey, I can do virtual lessons. But, like, here's the thing. When you post, like, an ad like that, you know, maybe you'll get a response or two. Not, right? No, it's important to, you know, actually, again, change things. Right? Atomic Total Fitness says, hey, let's do one free lesson, one of these free virtual lessons, right? To people. So that's a good idea. So it's just one thing you can say to teachers is maybe approach the parents that you used to teach and say something like, hey, uh, why don't I give your son slash daughter a free lesson, see if they like it. And if they do, we can talk about ways to make it affordable for you, right? Because so there, teachers are experiencing a pinch, chess teachers, but also the parents across the board of our students are feeling, many of them are feeling a pinch as well. And so I think maybe it makes sense to step lightly in terms of uh, cost. Right? That said, definitely, I'm, you know, I'm a huge, 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 huge proponent of the idea that you never want to leave in, lead in with value. So never would I say like, oh yeah, we can work something out or that could be a discount. Now I will do that. For sure, and I, I, I do have, you know, certainly school programs and, uh, you know, private lessons that, you know, have been, uh, you know, discounted um, a little bit, for sure. You like a means testing thing. Uh, 
you do kind of a means testing thing. If a parent says to you, I'm short, you'll work with them. Yeah? I'm not going to get into too much of our, our model right now, over the, you know, but, um, you know, look, I, I am, yes, put it this way, I'm a, I'm a big believer, whether it's a school program, a corporate class, or a private lesson, uh, yes, I, I am a believer if two sides see value in a partnership, then, you know, we will be able to work something. Okay, so let's talk for the normal chess year for teachers is connected very closely to the academic year right schools are on after school programs are on uh what do you think is going to happen to funding for after school programs do you have any information about what what the after school programs are you know if you're funded by the department of education if you're in a program this year that's funded by the department of education should does it should you be wary of that funding not being there for the for coming September, or you think everything is just it'll work out in the end and it'll be just fine. Um, again, I I, I I look. This is something, and, and and by the way, I mean it, it seems like I'm beating around the bush, but you know this is something I learned back in when I was you know day one at Oracle. Um, you know. Look, you need to make your 40 calls a day. You need to make your emails. You need to get out. You need to meet people. Um, you know, trying to spend all my time doing research and figuring out when things are normal. Guess what? That could be my whole day and my life could go away. Okay, I need to be, you know, doing things like this, getting my name out there, uh, you know, connecting with people on, uh, you know, networking events. Um, you know, today alone, I have two networking events. I had one yesterday, right? So this is the type of stuff that's going to actually keep me busy. And this is the kind of stuff that actually, you know, I might not see the benefit right now, but I, I definitely will reap the benefit, right? So, you know, spending all this time trying to figure out, oh yeah, when, uh, you know, will things, you know, normalize again, blah, 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 you know, talking to people about, oh, when will this normalize? Again, like, it's it's literally a shot in the dark, okay. The 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 best thing. I'm not asking that. I'm not asking that. You've been to you've been to meetings with DOE officials. Have they talked to you about what budgeting for after school programs is going to look like? It's going down. I can tell you that for sure. Do you have any idea of what kind of numbers? I mean, so so funding is going to go down. Do we have any? Is it going to be gone or extremely limited or somewhat? Do you have any idea of the scope? It's not of going to be gone. It's it's going to be lower. And and again, I mean, I I think the DOE officials that I'm talking to, you know, don't know yet for sure. I mean, for one, um, you know, budget for for one don't get finalized until you know the beginning of the fiscal year in July. Um, you know, most schools, unless they're like extremely serious about chess, won't actually start to, you know, really think about it until August, September, anyhow. Um, so that's the normal time that contracts would start to be done around August, right? So that's when you'll really know what the, you'll have a better handle on what September will look like come August, I guess when the contracts get done or don't, or don't get done, that kind of thing, right? At, at the very least, you know, over the summer, yes. Okay, so ordinarily you would be going to the summer. So let's talk a little bit about Premier Chess. It's a nice plug for you. Uh, Premier Chess is vested in, in bringing chess, not only to Americans, but around the world. And so you go to Africa every summer or have done every summer, right? Tanzania, is it? Um. Yes, sorry. So yes, we, we, we go to Tanzania um, every summer. Um, this year's trip is a little bit um, postponed. Um, it might happen in December, it might happen next year, but yes, we partner with Make a Difference Now, uh, a wonderful organization that started 14 years ago as an orphanage. Now they have 31 students in primary and secondary school and university. So you would normally be going out to Africa? to yes. teach these kids is there any way is there any chance that you could do that virtually is that been tossed around uh probably not i mean their connections are pretty limited there uh-huh gotcha so that's an interesting uh, way to perceive the differences in the world is like 
who, how are you affected by the pandemic? Well, Americans largely have access to the internet and can do conversations like this, can talk to family members like this, but imagine having to do social distancing in a place where no Zoom, not many telephones perhaps, uh, or back in time in the early 1900s when we had the Spanish flu. I mean, how different was that experience to today? I, I, I wonder, I'm glad I don't have to, I'm glad I really can't compare them. That's, I think a, a bonus. First of all, I'd be very old. <laughs> and second of all, what a horrible time to have lived through uh, then. Okay, so let's get back to, let's get back to chess for a sec. I, what percentage, so how many employees does Premier Chess have or freelance associations, let's say? We have 48 independent contractors. And of those 48, how many are currently uh, working through Zoom for you? Uh, about 10. About 10, so you've got about 25% of your workforce still going. So that's, that's pretty good. Do you have any idea what other chess companies are experiencing in the same way or? or is it, do you think the numbers are roughly the same? Or? Um, I would say it's similar. Um, you know, I have actually talked to a lot of our other chess companies around. Uh, many of them had, have also been on our uh, Premier Chess podcast, soundcloud.com slash Premier Chess. And uh, yeah, I think they're definitely similar. You know, I'm speaking to Elliot Neff over in Seattle and Bill Clausen and Raleigh. And so they're employing about 25%. So does that mean... If you're employing 25% of your workforce, does that mean your income is about at 25% of what it was? Is that, is that right? You are uh, in- no, but it's, it's, it's less than what it was before. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so about 25%. So hopefully those numbers will go up. Uh, we have a lot of friends and colleagues in common and I don't wanna see those guys uh, and gals hurt any more than they have to be by this pandemic. It's a scary moment for our industry. I think for anyone that is connected to the after school or even Department of Education in general, I think this is a moment. That said, one thing I want to make very, very clear that we're not an after school company. Um, For one, we actually do a lot of classes that are nothing to do at schools. We do a lot of, uh, you know, corporate classes and other types of workshops, but many of our school programs are actually uh, curriculum classes during the day. Um, other types of electives. We've also done a lot of professional development. Uh, For instance, for the District 2 Pre-K Center, we've actually taught two teachers per site um, from all of their seven sites. So you have almost 50 programs, you said. What number of them are DOE, roughly? About 15 of them. So so even if the DOE uh, funding is, is cut dramatically, for you, it's never good to lose, 13 is a large percentage of, of almost 50, but it's less than half. So uh, for you, you're positioned kind of well. And also, unlike many of your colleagues, you're into things that are not the straight up establish a relationship with the school and go in and teach either curriculum or after school, uh, right? You're, as you say, you're in law firms and you're in many private schools. So that keeps you and your your workforce somewhat well insulated, don't you think? We're definitely more flexible than others. And yes, I do have my corporate background as well. I've, you know, worked at Oracle for three years and Rapid7 for a year. So yes, I'm definitely, you know, been staying busy for sure. Okay, Evan, I want to thank you very much for joining me today. It uh, has been an interesting conversation, a little worrisome, but I think you also delivered some hope to our community. Uh, do what you can do now. Control the controllables. That's your big message, huh? Absolutely. Coach Michael Deutsch, uh, a very good friend of mine who, you know, again, is the owner of Hands on Hoop, but, you know, he's inspirational. Um, And yes, he says control the controllables. Let's make sure that, you know, we're we're doing everything we could do. You know, we usually sit tight and say, yeah, things are, you know, difficult, but um, no, we really need to just make sure that, you know, we're moving forward. We're not letting anything, you know, stop us. That's Isabel. And, you know, we're, we're moving forward and, and also like not even just for ourselves. You know, I know a lot of people that are doing, you know, great charity fundraisers. Uh, you know, Carissa Yip, for instance, is, you know, running this big, you know, online charity tournament. Um, I just saw another thing this morning that. So there are uh, things happening out there. 
there there was this chess in action tournament uh, that Zhang and Lee were you know supporting uh, or won. So yeah, there's definitely you know a lot of stuff going on as well. Good, glad to hear that. All right, Evan, I want to thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate your information you've shared. Uh, I know there are a lot of people that want to hear what you have to say about this. By the way, I'm going to be interviewing shortly our mutual friend Alana Katz and a couple other folks in the chess world. I want to try to get a pretty round idea of what folks are thinking who are involved on the business end of what's happening. So this is going to be a series and yours is the very first. Thank you again so much for joining Beautiful. me. Beautiful. It's my honor to be first and I look forward to seeing Alana's interview as well. She's definitely the good friend and colleague and I'm sure she's going to have a lot to say. All right. All right. Have a great day, Evan. Um, thanks again. Bye-bye now. Thank you.